nine-month-old baby, liver failure, dying. That's what the page read on that cold Ann Arbor night at the University of Michigan Hospital a few years ago. Now, as a transplant surgeon, we often get pages like this. But this one just felt a little different. And two hours later, when that baby was transferred to our hospital, I realized why. It was worse than we thought. In the days that ensued after he was transferred to our hospital, not only was his liver failing, his kidneys were failing, his lungs were failing, he was placed on a ventilator, and eventually, his tiny little heart stopped. Now, we were able to get him back, but we knew the clock was ticking. The time on this planet that he had to live was limited. And then the next page. A donor organ was available two states away. We flew in the middle of the night, got this liver, brought it back, and in an eight-hour grueling operation, transplanted this child. And then we waited. The next few days, it's touch and go, but overall, he was making some improvement. Two weeks later, when I gathered the team to go make our routine morning rounds, we went eagerly up to his room, and I was met with an empty bed and a nurse with a tear in her eye. My heart sunk. A cascade of the worst thoughts just came flooding through my brain. But as I looked closer to that nurse, she had a smile on her face and she was pointing to the playroom. We peered into the playroom, and this beautiful baby boy was sitting in his mother's arms, surrounded by family, eyes wide open for the rest of his life. That baby that was dying two weeks before was now very much alive. And that is the power of transplantation. What a victory. But folks, He's a lucky one. The harsh reality is we're losing the game. Just look at the scoreboard. With over 120,000 people on the list and only about 7,000 donors out there, 22 people are dying each day waiting for a life-saving organ. In fact, in South Carolina, if you're waiting for a kidney transplant, it's an average of about three to five years. And the clock is always ticking. Every 10 minutes, another person is added to that list. In fact, by the time I finish this talk, another person will be put on the list. We are losing the game. Now, you might say, that's the status quo. That's just how it is. That's the way the world works. Well, that is unacceptable. There are two types of people in this world, those that accept the status quo and those that try to change it. Let me tell you what we're doing to change the game. Currently, in the case of kidney transplantation, we take organs from either deceased donors or living donors and transplant them into the pelvis, into the blood vessels that go down to your legs while keeping your malfunctioning kidneys intact. And then we administer medications to keep that organ from rejecting. Now, these anti-rejection medications, although necessary, are nothing short of poisons. They predispose you to infections, cancers, kidney disease, liver disease, and are sometimes fatal. But what if we could actually target the drugs to the organs in need? Well, with the use of nanotherapy and nanotechnology, we've actually invented a nanoparticle that encapsulates these drugs. And these nanoparticles actually travel to the organ in need and deliver these therapies at lower doses so that the organ can live longer, but more importantly, the patient lives longer too. So increasing the longevity of these organs and patients 
isn't all we're doing. What if we could actually boost your own failing kidney function? Well, in our laboratories, we're actually pioneering a concept where we actually take cells from your own kidneys, implant them into a three-dimensional bioprinted lattice structure framework, and then incorporate them into your own tissues so that this filters the blood just like your kidneys would. So if you're going through the spiral of decline and you've been diagnosed with kidney disease and you go from 90% function to 60% function to less than 20% function, you only have two options, transplant or a lifetime of dialysis. But with this pioneering technology, we can actually keep you from needing dialysis or even a transplant. And that is the power of technology. Now, these innovations of three-dimensional bioprinting, bioengineering, artificial tissue development represent the next era of transplantation and are truly game changers. But folks, we can change the game all we want. But I have five very important words for you. We can't win without you. That's right. Everything I, I can accomplish in a lifetime cannot even come close to comparing to what you can do today. What's the face of transplant? Look to your neighbor. You're the face of transplant. In the case of deceased donation, or donating organs after we pass, with the ability to donate a heart, lungs, kidneys, liver, pancreas, one person can save eight lives. Or better yet, if you decide to donate today, you can save a life immediately. So take, for example, this whole room needs a life-saving organ. If only 10% of you decided to donate, either now or later, we would all walk out of here alive. And that is the ultimate power the power of community that you, you, you all have. So rise up, get off the bench, register to be a donor, consider living donation, join me in this battle, join our team. Together, we can save more lives because the time is now. Someone else was just added to that list. Thank you.